I have now learned that small thing matters. I just got this new wallet, which I have seen a lot from in other people's, but uh, I haven't got it. My wife bought it with the signature Kingdom Warrior. I will explain that later in my channel. But yeah, it's great. Cards come, but they don't drop. And especially my old one was this Calvin Klein kind of thing that has been, I have used about 10 years now. Yeah, but same goes with the editing, small things, small things will improve your workflow. And today we're gonna talk about that. I will be giving you five tips to improve your work workflow dramatically. And this have been saved for me hours. Let's go. What up my friends, it's Igor here. If you haven't subscribed my channel yet, click on subscribe. Don't forget to click on notification bell so you won't miss any content that I will be posting. Okay, so I will be sharing five tips to improve your workflow. And actually four of them are inside Premiere Pro. And one is the extra that I have noticed worked for me very well and improved my workflow a lot. Okay, so let's start from the first one. The first one is bins. And basically what I'm talking about is organizing your content. Because when your content is organized, it will improve your workflow because you can find everything very easily and you know where are your clips are, where are your audio, where is your pictures. So let's go to the PC and I will show you how I organize my content. Okay, so here we are at my PC and this is basically same as my desktop. It's a desktop, desktop folder and I have their peer projects. Here are my projects that I'm currently editing, except of course this Polish, Polish watch b-roll. I have actually done the video and you can watch it here. Just click the card and you can see that there. But I create, for every project I create own folder. And here you see workflow tutorial, it's this. When I click that, there will be my, when I have when I have created the project, there will be Premiere Pro project file and auto save and other folders like here, captured video. Then I create this media folder inside that folder. And there are all my clips. If I have B-roll clips, I move them to there. If I have drone videos, I move them to their own folder. If I have like vlog style, I will put my move my files into that folder. And let's say I have like in this video, I will be having screen recording. So then I just create folder and I will put all my screen recording folders into there. But this is not it. Now, when we are going to Premiere Pro, I will show you how I manage those files here. So here is the project open and I will import my files. Now it won't bring the screen recording folder because it's empty, but here. Now I have all the clips I have, all the content I have that I will be using in my video. But how I do from here is when I have all these, they are all labeled in the same color. And that will be confusing when it's on that timeline. I want to separate them. So I click on the last clip, then I click on this bin folder too. And right click, go to the label and choose the color you want. Let's say rose, rose for B-roll. Then for the drone, let's go with the blue. Now I have blue there and then for the vlog videos I go to the tan. So now you see when we drag the files into timeline they are all in their own label color. And now if you have a lot of videos 
in your timeline, you will see where everything is. You will see from the color, you know that, okay, these are my drone picture videos, these are my B-rolls and these are my vlogs. This will help you edit a lot faster when you are doing your editing. Now, tip number two is to use proxies. What are the proxies? They will clone your file and you can edit your videos with the lower resolution. Because if you are editing with the 4K or maybe 6K, 8K, uh, you need a very powerful PC to render that file in your timeline. So that's why the proxies are very good. And let's go to the Premiere Pro and I will show you how to create proxies. Okay, so here we are at the Premiere Pro and I want these files to be smaller one. They are now 1080p and actually I believe my PC can, can handle them. Let's mute this. Yeah, it renders, it renders them good, but and here no lag. But if I would have 4K video, uh, it will be missing the frames when I move the mouse. So what I do then is I choose all of the clips, then right click, go to the proxy, create proxies and choose. Now when I have 1080p files, I want to create smaller ones. So here is the 1024 times 540 H264. That's fine for me. That will run very good in this PC. And here, where I want it to next to original media in proxy folder. Then this will also organize your content wisely. Then you can find your proxy files too. So let's hit the OK. And then Adobe Media Encoder opens and it will do all the magic automatically. So now you see it's creating proxy jobs. It will take some time. So here you see it's creating proxies and now it's done. Now we can close this and if we go to our content folder, it's B-roll and here you see here are the proxies. And if we check the file size of the first one, it's 30.7 megabytes. And if we go to here and click the first one, it's 5.20 megabytes. So it's a lot smaller and this will improve your workflow a lot. Every professional use the proxies because they have a lot of stuff in their timeline and that my PC runs with the 60 gigabyte RAM, but still I have the problems with the 1080p when I have a lot of videos and a lot of effects or adjustment layers. Okay, so then tip number three is cut faster. When you are editing, you will be cutting your content a lot. You're doing B-roll and all that kind of stuff. You need to cut, 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 cut. Or like me, I don't find words many times, so I'm just bubbling around and I don't know what to say or my tongue gets twisted and all that kind of stuff. So I will cut, I will need to cut a lot because uh, English is not my native langu language, so, so I have a lot, of, a lot of troubles to say the words, some words, and, uh, and they are hard. So that's why the cutting is very important to do fast. And let's go to the Premiere and I will show you how to cut faster. Uh, when I just started to editing, uh, I was using this razor, razor tool and I just chose the places where I wanted to cut and then made my cut. Then we'll go back to the selection tool, choose the clip and delete it and then move everything into the their places. It was, it was messy. It was very messy and I didn't like it. So this is what I was doing. And then I learned the shortcut for, for the cutting. And it's a C and then just cut and then click the V 
back to the selection tool and choose what you want to delete and delete. But it did improve a little bit, but not that much. Then I learned another shortcut, which was actually better. You can play and just check the place where you want. Okay, this is good place to cut and hit Control K or Command K in Mac and it will cut from that place. This made a huge improvement in my workflow. I wanted to know if there's a little more and I started to study Premiere Pro and what kind of possibilities there are. Because I thought that there has to be better way. So even faster way to cut is to click Q in your clip and it will cut and delete everything from left. Or go to the end if you want to remove this here, you click W and it will cut and remove that from your clip. And then we have one more, which is Ripple Edit Tool. This one here, and you can get it by pressing B in your keyboard. And now you can see here where it will be cutting. If you want it to start here, you just rele release. And now you can see that your clip starts from there. And also same works in the other di direction. So it will cut. You can see in that left window where it will be cutting it. So if you know exact point, this is very powerful tool that just cut your clip. Okay, that was tip number three. And now we will go tip number four, which is moving clips faster. And what I mean is it's actually pretty hard to explain, so let's go to the Premiere Pro and I will show you. So, let's imagine we have clips like this. And they all have their own purpose. To add one clip here between. And we have several option, options here. I will be showing you now a few of them. The one very good tool for that is here track select forward tool and you can get it by hitting a now you can see this two arrow so if you click on this first clip it will automatically select everything right from that clip you are selecting and now you can just drag and then you can add your file there and then just get back with the same tool to here and move it back and now you have added successfully the one clip between those all the all the other clips but then if you want to move into the other direction just click shift and a and now you can now it will be choosing everything from your clip to the left and you can move them so let's imagine we have this situation here and we want to move these clips to the other direction we take this and now we have this room here and then we need to click this one and drag and drop them here so you there's a lot of different situation where you can use this this tool and this has fastened my workflow if we need to duplicate files i used a lot ctrl c and ctrl v but you have to make sure it will pass the it where your timeline is. And also, if you don't want it to pass for uh, into the video track one and audio track one, you need to deselect this and select video track two and audio tra track two and then pass. But a lot faster is if you just click Alt and drag and drop. Then you can move them how you want. So like this. Just clicking 
alt and and if you don't want to duplicate audio just lock the audio and then you can copy and paste by clicking alt and then selecting and dragging and dropping so it's that easy also the other method is like I said by adding adding clips between if we have these two here and we want this one between those we will click control and then drag and drop and it will automatically move this to the right and add the new clip between those because as you see there will come these arrows here like this you will see it will not delete anything around here because if you don't click control it will cut this video and you can see it from the audio line here it's same as it was so it will cut cut the start of this clip but by hitting control it will move that and if we are clicking alt this video is a lot longer but if we click alt and above this it will add that new video with the same time length as the previous clip that was there already this is the powerful ways to move your clips and uh, one of the most is i use is this track selection tool because it's just clicking by a and you can move them move everything very fast and add clips of course in this kind of timeline it's not that much but uh, if you have like a 30 minutes clip or 20 minutes clip then there will be all kind of adjustment layers and audio files and sound effects and all that kind of stuff so then to just select them like this it's it's just way too small when you can just hit a and click and drag so those were the four tips in Premiere Pro and one tip is learn the shortcuts and the best way to learn the shortcuts is to have a notepad write them in it, into your notepad like here I have Premiere Pro then I have different for for After Effects for Photoshop for Lightroom and now when I have written them down into my notepad I can always just check from the notepad which is right into my table and I don't have to change from program to from Premiere Pro to notepad or something like that especially if you are editing with the one monitor and even I have two monitors uh, I usually have Photoshop open in in one monitor and Premiere Pro open in one monitor but uh, when I have notepad here next to me I can just check fast what was the shortcut and then just use use it and when I have done that a lot I will remember it and of course I have been adding these shortcuts slowly I didn't knew them when I started so when I learned I wrote new down and same with the label colors in bins uh, I have done what label color I use in which video material like for drone on for b-roll on for a-roll on for screen recording on and I always use the same colors that's that's how you improve your editing and then you will start to remember slowly those things but uh, i have done a lot of mistakes i have uh, removed my whole time timeline and that's why what i do no matter what kind of change i do i always click control s to save my project every time after a, a little change i will click control control s and it will be saving my project okay this were the were my tips uh, i hope you like comment if you have some kind of different workflow or your way to edit faster uh, 
there's a lot of settings that you can also change but uh, that's not what this video is about this video is about to make a workflow faster and i just wanted to give these tips because these tips has saved me hours of time now i can edit 50 minute clip in uh, two to three hours it used to take from six to eight hours even ten hours because I have just started so I make a lot of mistakes and I try to learn from them I hope you like the video click subscribe button for more this kind of content and we will see on the next video bye